I'm the cheating couple of this season. I, like I never could have imagined that would have played out for me. Welcome back to Behind the Edit, your go-to podcast for unpacking the actual reality behind reality TV. I'm Lachlan Gurdon. And I'm Talia Pritchard. And today we're joined by another very special guest, someone from last year's season of Married at First Sight, Jesse Burford. I think Jesse is the perfect guest to chat to this week. Not only is he connected to some of the season 11 cast that live in Perth, but he was also part of the cheating scandal last year. His wife, Claire, kissed Adam. So he has a lot to say about what went down with Jono and Lauren this week. Yeah, this week was actually a little bit more dramatic than what I was originally giving it credit for. So last week in the office, I was obviously like, it's going to be flop week. (laughs) They're just filler episodes till final vows. Nothing's going to happen. I was incorrect. Yeah. Even last week's podcast, we were talking about how it's hard to root for Jono and Lauren because we knew that the cheating scandal Mm -hmm. was about to come out. Thankfully, it's started to come out already, so we don't have to pray for them to work as a couple any longer. I just didn't think it was going to come out in the final commitment ceremony or the final dinner party. Like, I honestly thought it was just going to be like a um, Troy and Carly situation, throwback season, where they just rocked up to the reunion hand in hand and there was no scandal about it. It was just like they met in the outside world and decided to make it work. But this is more scandalous than what I thought. It was so interesting seeing how it all unfolded because obviously Tori brought it up at the commitment ceremony. Mm -hmm. Apparently Lauren was blindsided. This leads me into my thumbs up and thumbs down of the week. It started as a thumbs down when Tori first brought it up. To me, it felt hypocritical that she was mad Lauren had dragged her away at one of the early dinner parties to tell her that Jack said that he wishes there was a couple swap. He Mm -hmm. wasn't interested in her. She was mad that Lauren had done that. So then by her calling out Jono's behavior and exposing him to Lauren blindsiding her at the commitment ceremony, I just thought, okay, this isn't right because you wanted to be pulled aside off camera, whereas you brought it up in the biggest, most public setting. But then this moment turned into a thumbs up when I learned that Tori and Lauren had actually worked together to expose this at the commitment ceremony. So Lauren wasn't blindsided. She knew it was going to come out. I was wondering about this because when I was watching the episode, I was trying to figure out like body language of Lauren and Jono and all the couples. But to be honest, they all kind of looked a bit depressed. So it was hard to really tell. (laughs) So Jack and Lauren have both briefly touched on this in the media this week, but I've spoken to some production insiders to get the full truth about what went on. Apparently what happened is that Andrea is close with Ellie. She knew about the messages to Jono and she told her friend Lucinda. Then Lucinda's in the car on the way to the commitment ceremony with Tori and she tells Tori. So by the time they arrive at the commitment ceremony, Lucinda and Tori tell Lauren about what had been going on. Apparently that was the first she knew about it. And they decided together to bring it up on camera at the commitment ceremony. Right. I feel like we need a map for this. I need like a whiteboard and you drawing. It's so convoluted. Basically, let's go through it again. Ellie <laughs> told Andrea, who told Lucinda, who told Tori, who then told Lauren. At the commitment ceremony. At before the commitment the, ceremony. She told her something before the commitment ceremony and then during the commitment ceremony too. Yes. Elaborated on it. So they met up before the commitment ceremony started filming, before the cameras were rolling. Tori gave Lauren the heads up and Lauren said, okay, let's bring this up on camera. I'm assuming the producers would have also encouraged that mm. because we want the storylines to make sense. For sure. But I think it kind of clears any doubt that Tori was trying to throw Lauren under the bus or kind of get back at her for what she did about Jack. Totally. And it's almost a moment of sisterhood. They were working together to bring down Jono and expose what had been happening. And I'm hoping that Tori and Lauren can be friends again. Well, you can kind of see it in the dinner party that they go to the next night that Lauren, when she gets in solo, she really goes to Tori and starts telling her about yes, like true. her time with Jono and what Jono said and all that kind of stuff as well. So you can kind of see the friendship looks like it's nearly back on track during that moment. Maybe it was a bit of a bonding moment. Whereas if Tori had just thrown Lauren under the bus completely, I don't think she would be confiding in her about reading Ellie's messages to Jono. What I really kind of fixated on when you were telling that story was the fact that Ellie's told Andrea. Yes. I think that's interesting as well. Because obviously there was something to tell Andrea. Yeah, she's telling her for a reason, right? And not necessarily thinking it's going to get back to everyone, but it's like when you do have a crush on someone and you're talking to your friends, you always find a reason to bring that person up. (laughs) Yeah. And that kind of feels like that vibe. 
Because otherwise they would have just walked in hand in hand if we didn't know all of this. Yeah. So technically we have to thank Andrea for being the reason to thank cause this you, drama. <laughs> Who knew that she would be the drama star of this season? <laughs> New label. I want to hear your thumbs down and thumbs up of the week though. Okay, I'll start on thumbs down. Um, I think this is more a general kind of fan reaction to the storyline that's unfolding right now. I'm a bit disappointed to see that people are just kind of skipping over the cheating saga because they think Jono and Ellie are a better match. And that's all fair and good. I think most people would probably say they do seem better suited for each other. Yeah. What I don't like, though, is maybe because Lauren's been quite confident and bold and maybe at times a little bit abrasive on the show, people are just kind of diminishing her experience of like this betrayal because Jono has technically betrayed her in the sense of like he can say it was just a friendship and there was no ulterior motive or anything like that, but he also hid it from her. Yeah. And that's been dishonest. And I think people are kind of brushing that under the rug because they're like, oh, well, he, Jono and Lauren weren't well suited for each other. But I was like, she still can have her feelings hurt by that. She can still feel lied to because he did. He lied to her. It's such a different cheating scandal to previous years. Like if you look at Jessica Power and Dan, she cheated on Mick and everyone was so mad about them being a couple. Mm. They worked out after the show briefly, but people did not like how that went down. Same with Daniel and Carolina. They liked their partners and therefore they were mad at them for cheating. Whereas this one, it seems as though Lauren and Ben, we have to admit that Ben wasn't a fan favorite. <laughs> yeah. People are glad that they've left those relationships and now Jono and Ellie are together. It just feels other. icky. I think so. And I think given again, and we talked about this last week, the fact that Jono and Lauren did reconnect on their homestay visit. And that just adds this extra layer of a bit like, so you slept with your wife again and reconnected romantically. Yeah while you've been texting this other girl, regardless of whether it's a friendship or not, that's fine. But I don't hide my friends. I don't hide the messages I send to my male friends, you know? So it's something to be questioned. And he did make a point as well being like, I'm messaging all the other cast members, like Michael and Steven. He didn't name Cassandra. He didn't name Andrea. He didn't (laughs) name Natalie, any of the other brides that have left. He was specifically naming Ellie as the only bride he's speaking to. But anyway, what is your thumbs up from this week? (laughs) Thumbs up from this week is that it's nearly over. (laughs) We've only got, what, two weeks of maths left to go, probably. Two weeks to go, four episodes left. Yeah, final vows, final dinner party, final, you wouldn't even call it a commitment ceremony, but final kind of reunion app. And then we can all just have a really big sleep. We won't hold you here any longer. Let's just (laughs) get into our chat with Jesse. Jesse, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, have you been watching this season of Maths so far? I have. I've, I've caught between maybe 30 to 40% of the episodes. How has it felt watching it back? Is it triggering for you? I've had some really bad nights watching it, for sure. Um, I'm, I'm unsure if you know this, but I actually knew Collins before his Maths experience and watching him get drilled on the couch by the experts and to have to watch him go through his edit, his portrayal to the audience was very upsetting because I know him to be a very good person and for him to be made out otherwise is was very upsetting. Speaking about Collins, there was a comment that you made on Instagram at the start of the season about him being your boy. He had a terrible experience and you wanted you were hopeful that he would get a good edit. Did you give him any advice before he started filming? Oh, yeah, I, for sure I would have given him advice. Do I remember what that was? <laughs> not, no, not particularly. It would have been pretty generic, you know. Yeah, I, okay. I, I don't have like all these major math secrets and ploys and strategies up my sleeve that I, you know, can readily tell new cast members. I can just give basic advice, which is try not to talk badly about people. I don't know, man. Just go in honestly. Go in to give it a, the, like, an honest crack at a relationship. Well, there are a few participants other than Collins this season that are from Perth. You're from Perth as well. Did you know anyone else besides Collins? Uh, I had met Lauren once. Okay. What was the vibe there? Um, It was fine. She was really nervous before going on the show and through a mutual friend, um, put us together and we just had a chat for about 45 minutes and 
and that was it. So you caught up on the episodes that aired this week. So you would have seen the cheating scandal kind of erupt between Lauren and Jono. In your opinion, do you think what Jono was doing, messaging Ellie behind Lauren's back, does that count as cheating on a show like Maps? Well, it definitely doesn't classify as cheating in the traditional sense of how we know it, where you either you know kiss or sleep with someone. Um, but are you technically doing the wrong thing by the experiment? I would say yes. I, I, I think a lot of cast members go in to the show not realizing you need to go at this experiment like it truly is a bona fide legit marriage right and if you behave outside of the confines of what we describe a healthy suitable marriage to be then you're done because all the cast members and all the production crew will jump on that and make you out to be a worse person for doing that than you truly are. So I wouldn't hold it against Jono for um, texting what he describes as a friend, but I would say it was a silly thing to do because you know the environment of this show is looking to nab you any chance they can. So just don't do it. Save yourself. That makes sense. I guess it's also the hiding of it too, right? Like if he had said at any point that we know of, and it could have not been shown, yeah. that he's like, oh, I was texting with Ellie, or he had told Lauren in any other kind of environment, it wouldn't be as shocking, but maybe it's just the the actions of hiding it make yeah. it look so much more worse than what it actually is. That was the same with Sarah and her ex. Like it wasn't really that she met up with her ex, who is now a friend, but it was more so that she completely didn't tell her partner. Well, I guess in the sense of your storyline, Jesse, you weren't necessarily told when your partner on the show had kissed someone else. Do you think she wanted to tell you earlier and production made her not? Uh, no, I think, no, I know what happened. <laughs> Claire <laughs> bragged to Bronte that she kissed Adam. Bronte was ready to tell Harrison and Harrison was ready to expose Claire at the dinner party. Claire got privy to that and was like, I've got two options. I come clean to Jesse and I play that arc or I get roasted by Harrison in at the dinner party. I mean, if you were in Claire's position, what would you do? You would also fake that all of a sudden you have so much respect for the partner that you just cheated on and you really admire him, it's all nonsense. Your storyline with Claire, it was the big cheating scandal last year, obviously, and there has been a cheating scandal pretty much every season for the past six or so seasons. When that all unfolded, did you think, oh, great, like, we're the cheating scandal of the year? Did you go into it anticipating or kind of hoping, fingers crossed, we're not the cheating scandal? Like, how aware are you of a cheating scandal unfolding on maths? Um, well, personally, I remember when Claire told me at Taylor and Hugo's um, intruder wedding. And I remember sitting there going, I, 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 I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I could, I, I'm like, oh my God. Like after I processed it a little bit, I then also thought, I'm the, f-ing, I'm the cheating couple of this season. I, like I never could have imagined that would have played out for me. <laughs> you definitely become kind of like, the big storyline of the season once that happens. Like there's always at least one cheating scandal. This season there's been about two or three versions of cheating, but that was definitely a cheating, like kissing scandal with your season. People are one version of themselves on camera and another person off camera. And and I'm guilty of that as well. Although I will defend myself in saying probably to a lesser extent, I try to be as authentic as I possibly can when the cameras are rolling, but there are some people who ha- there's a much greater divide. And uh, yeah, there are some people who are very well behaved when the cameras are rolling. And then when they're not, when we're out at the pub, they want to do what they want to do and they think they're going to get away with it. Probably already know the answer to this question, but do you have any contact with Claire now? No, the last point of contact we had was um, a text set of text messages wishing each other the best on February 1st last year, uh, which was the same night as our episode 
wedding episode going to air. When you watched your whole experience unfold with Claire, what do you wish you did differently, if anything? Yeah, great question. I wish that I spoke up more. Like I had, I could have gone to all of those dinner parties and absolutely annihilated, not just Claire, plenty of people at that table, but I felt bad. I was like, ah, I don't want to, I don't want to expose this person in front of all of Australia. So I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. Watching the show back and seeing some things that I really weren't happy with, I was like, man, I, I wish that I spoke up more. So the, the edits or more accurately, the portrayal of what actually happened was more in alignment with how I was feeling. What incident springs to mind when you're thinking of that? And you were saying it's not just Claire, it was other people at the table too. What do you wish you really spoke up about? Is there one certain storyline? One thing that, I, and I don't I don't want to turn this interview into like me like harping on Claire or whinging about Claire, but one thing that was completely glossed over was who she was actually on the phone to that night I thought she was on the phone to Adam that completely the show didn't touch on that at all did you want to share who was on the phone oh on the phone yeah she was chatting to her ex-boyfriend the one that she's back with now <laughs> okay yeah. so, so it, 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 one could argue that that's even worse than being on the phone with Adam <laughs> Right. But then Claire to the side, like you asked about other people and I'm not like, I, we obviously can't do it in the context now, but I would need time to think and remember and go, mm. Oh, this, that, this, that, this. But for the most part, I just, I would want to say like, you're fake, man. You're, you're not legit. You're one person off camera and you're another person on camera. That makes sense. It's more like calling people out for their behavioural changes versus actual big storylines or anything that's yeah. kind of going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and a lot of, like, one one example is um, couples being in agreement that they're going to, there's nothing there, but they'll try to get through the show as long as they can. Like, those conversations were happening in my season. And and then I know of couples who are doing it this season as well. Name some names. Who's doing it this season, Jesse? Oh, Jono and Lauren. Okay. Um, Sarah is, I don't know, is it Sarah or Sarah? I never <laughs> get it right. But, and Tim, I, I can guarantee it because I spoke to cast members who were at the dinner table where they, they came forward about it and admitted, yeah, we were in an agreement. But of course, Channel 9 and End of Shine aren't going to air that part of the night on TV. Maybe they should. Maybe it's time to do yeah. that. Really turn it on its head and just be like, here's all the secret conversations unearthed. You know what's ironic? They're trying so hard to make Tori and Jack look like this fake couple when, when really it's all the couples who are coming at those two saying how fake they are. They're the ones who are truly fake. After the show, you were spotted with Janelle and I know you guys are good friends now, but there was like hints or there was rumours rather of a romantic interaction with you guys because I think you were papped out at lunch together or something. Um, I've always been curious about those photos that come out as the show's airing or after it's aired. Is that something that you guys can set up or is that are you just literally being stalked around and happen to be caught having lunch together? Yeah, no, I'll... I'll tell you fully about that. So when we're filming maths, we, um, you make friends with the paparazzi, mm -hmm. right? And there was one paparazzi who flew over to Perth, who me and Janelle had both made friends with and re like genuinely wanted to catch up with him. There's two paparazzi shots of me and Janelle. There's the one that we were at lunch and there's the one where we're holding hands at a festival. The one at lunch, Tani was actually with us as well. So there was three of us there. But the pap only took a photo <laughs> of me and Janelle to make it look like we were on a date, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it was four of us there in total. But he just took the photo of me and Janelle to make it look like we were on a date. So, and we weren't. But Janelle and I are complicit in that because we, we knew what he was doing and we knew what he was going to do with the photos. But we were like, 
it. Like, let's just have some fun with it. And the same at the festival. Like, me, Ollie, Janelle, Tani, we're all walking the four of us. And then me and Janelle had a little giggle, like, Let, let's hold hands. And he tapped us. <laughs> we're not together, you know. We never were together. We just did these cheeky things to stir up shit. No, I think that's fair enough. Is there any financial gain in that? Like, do you get paid if you want to stir up a new storyline? Like, obviously, Ellie and Jono had their photos leaked where they were kissing in the ocean and it's ruined the kind of storyline somewhat of him and Lauren. Do you think they would have been paid for shots like that? I don't know. Um, I know that you have a leg to stand on when anyone comes to you asking for photos or a podcast or, or, or an appearance at a nightclub, you can absolutely say, yeah, I'll do it for this amount of money. We've seen the photos now, obviously, of Jono and Ellie, but they will officially announce their romance at the upcoming reunion. If we unpack the reunion, how different was the filming of that compared to the dinner party? Well, man, it all comes down to how you individually feel because if you're in the firing line on any night, whether that be reunion or any of the previous dinner parties, you're not having a good time. So for me, the the reunion was the probably the best night I ever had on filming maps, right? Because there was no pressure on me at all. For 99% of the night, I sat next to Harrison and I just watched him shoot shots, Shots getting shot back at him. And I'm just like, this is going to be the greatest night of television Australia has ever known. And then I watched the episode back, what, six months later? And I was like, man, so much shit happened that night. And you chose to put this as the reunion dinner party? I sat in that room. I saw the amount of chaos. It was so funny. And then I thought our reunion episode was pretty lackluster. As a viewer now, have you noticed any of those sort of weird editing fails or anything like that for this season? I I watched Maps before I was a cast member and um, I picked up on the editing failures even then. Yeah. I never trust any of those reactions that I see when I'm watching a commitment ceremony with the experts. Me having lived the experience i know in those moments watching my season that that person did not give that reaction at that moment that was a reaction given earlier or later in the night that they've clipped and put there to exaggerate whatever was happening in that moment i hate watching it it's sickening obviously you get quite a high profile going on a show like this and coming off it has it made going back into the dating field harder for you or easier for you overwhelmingly easy but there's a splash of like challenges at the same time and this is probably going to trigger a lot of people watching this um but i can only talk about what i'm literally experiencing in my life right now which is when you have a lot of options it's hard to just like you know stick stick with one i guess i'm imagining you're getting a lot of dms from viewers what is the craziest thing you've been sent? Oh, naked photos. Uh, I'd like, I'd like, like text will be pretty crazy. There's some crazy stuff that people have like verbally text me, but the naked photos trumps that all, every time. When my season was peaking, yeah, there was a lot of naked photos sent. Just like no warning either. <laughs> Just like the, that's the first thing they send me, naked wow. photo. I mean, would you date a fan? Like someone that's viewed you on the show, they loved your portrayal. Would you take them out to dinner or anything? Yeah. Yeah, and I have. Okay. I don't really, because they very soon turn from fan into like a friend, like someone who I genuinely know them as a human being and and the veil of mass is removed from me and they get to know me as a, as a human being. And I've met some amazing women in the last 12 to 18 months. Um, I guess you could say thanks to my public, me being out there. Would you do another reality show again? Um, I'd I'd consider it. I think um, something like 
and I'm not classifying myself as a celebrity here, but I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Would Like that tickles my fancy. Would you do another dating one? Like a um, Love Island, F Boy Island, The Bachelor, any of those kind of ones? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think, I mean, again, I'd consider it, but the dating ones are the ones with the most risk. But you know what? The dating ones are probably the ones with the most risk and are the least fun. <laughs> you know, like I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. That would be the most fun and the least risk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fair. <laughs> In terms of other post show opportunities, often reality stars might launch a podcast, launch OnlyFans, write a book. Have you considered any of those paths? Not any further than I already had before maths like I wanted to do a heavy metal podcast where I review albums but that's no closer to becoming a reality than it was before maths you know and if I do do it I would want to do it I want to build that off the merit of the content of the podcast as opposed to my fame yeah I guess to wrap this up, what do you want fans of the show to keep in mind when they're watching the series? I think the majority of the audience know that they're watching bullshit. I think keep in mind to to shut your mouth. Don't talk about these cast members like you know better. Don't talk to cast members about cast members like you were there in the room. You weren't. And the more you harp on... um, about how much you dislike cast members or this is your opinion about this thing that you weren't even there in the room to see yourself, the more of an idiot you look like to people who are in the know. So just shut up, please. I think that's the perfect place to end this chat. Thank you so much for joining us, Jesse. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> So we have final vows coming up next week. A couple weeks ago on the podcast, we spoke to Lyndall Grace from last year's season. She had an iconic final vows moment where she didn't let Cam, her husband, speak. She just walked off and it was TV magic. Given the Lauren and Jono saga that's just happened, I'm curious to see if Lauren takes a note out of Lyndall's book and just absolutely demolishes Jono at final vows. But let's see what Lyndall had to say and how she prepared for this moment. It was it was so funny watching my episode of Final Vows because they really set it up. Like they went hard on being like she misses him and and you know there's no way she's going to say no to this guy and he's just like yeah whatever. And I do believe he was like yeah whatever. Like but there were there were other things that happened off camera that led me to the decision a lot earlier than that. I wasn't sitting at home being like, ooh, what should I do? I was literally, I got off the plane and my producer was like, so what do you think? I was like, I'm not staying with him. Like, no way, I'm not. It was like I had girls night, which was really, really good for me to see everybody again and be around my people. I had partner swap with Ollie, which was really eye-opening. And then we had homestays where I met all of Cam's friends and nothing had changed. So it was like, no, I'm not doing this I had his friend literally sit me down on my last night in Darwin and be no second last night in Darwin and be like what are you gonna do if you get your heart broken and I was like oh uh well I get I guess I get my heart broken then right and I've been with someone who keeps telling me when we get back to Darwin when we get back to Darwin it's all gonna be good I'm gonna be affectionate again you're gonna see that side of me it's just the pressure of the experiment it's not you and then yeah his friend's like well I was like, I guess that's that's what happened and that's what's going to happen then. And he was like, yeah, like. Yeah. And he was back, like, Cam was over in Boxy and his best friend is just sitting down telling me this and I was like, all these, like, little thoughts yeah. I'd had in the back of my head were just suddenly validated by this person that would, of course, know what's going on in Cam's head. And he just said, like, it was after we, like, I had a big cry at the at the friend barbecue thing with the fish and the whatever. And he was like, we can tell that like you're in this and it's really hard to watch and we know him and he can be honest with us. He's so scared of being the person that breaks up with you and he's so scared of looking like the bad guy. But like we, like he was like, I just, you know, you seem like a genuine person and that's not okay. So just, you know, and I was like, <laughs> and it was hard as well because I was like, it was so unfair that that all happened off camera because it was yeah. such a big realization for me. I think that production did a really good job of showing that 
anyway in like mm-hmm. in my vows and my reaction afterwards I think they did such a good job of like telling that story even though it wasn't delivered in that particular way but yeah like that that changed everything I didn't I didn't speak to Cam at all before final vows I wasn't interested at all in um entertaining the idea of being yep. with him anymore like produ- like the producer's like are you sure like you sure you don't want to say yes and I was like I'm not that dumb like I, I tried, I tried and I was willing to try, but I'm done trying. And, um, yeah, I got home. I wrote seven versions of my final vows. Wow. <laughs> I got my best friend Steph to read them because she's savage, fair, but savage. <laughs> and, and she was very, very proud of what I said. So yeah, I was sure I immediately got off the plane when I was home and I was like, no. Nah. I am so excited to see if any of the couples top Lindell's moment last year. But thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of Behind the Edit. If you like this episode, please leave us a glowing review. Make sure to follow us on all our socials, sign up to our exclusive newsletter and join our Facebook group. All the links will be in the show notes. And Lauren, dump him. (laughs) Behind the Edit is brought to you by Yahoo Australia. Hosted by Lachlan Girton and Talia Pritchard. Produced by Katie Brown. Social production by Alexa Tubertini. Yahoo Australia would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast was recorded, and pay our respects to elders past and present.